so we're here to talk about your work and I'm so excited. Um, the first time we chatted, it was um, about the, the Sober Diaries and today we're going to talk about your brand new book. Um, but just before we get on to that, if anybody in the group doesn't know who you are, um, can you just explain a little bit about your story and um, and how you got to be where you are right now? Mm, sure. Um, uh, well, five years ago, just over five years ago, uh, was the point at which I realised finally that I had to quit drinking because um, my drinking was totally out of control. Um, I was drinking about a bottle of wine a day during the week, probably more at weekends. Um, mm. and, you know, mentally and physically, that was sort of, you know, having a huge impact on my life. So, um, you know, after trying to uh, moderate my drinking for quite some time, which, which didn't work at all, um, I finally realized I had to quit altogether. And, you know, my form of therapy, uh, because I was too... I was too ashamed to tell anybody in real life what, you know, what I was going through. So my form of therapy was writing. So I started writing a blog and I called it Mummy Was a Secret Drinker. And uh, that blog is still out there on the internet with all my posts from back then, um, you yeah. know, and especially free and available for anyone who wants to, to, to read it. Um, and uh, uh, so I started writing that blog and um, through the blog, I met a whole community of people just like me, which was just such a revelation because, you know, I like everybody. I thought I was the only one that was struggling the way that I was struggling. I thought I was the only one that felt the way I did. Mm. So, um, so, you know, finding other people like me was, was fabulous. And um, after a year or so of writing the blog, people started saying, you know, you should turn this into a book because, you know, it would help other people. So I did. I, I um, published a book called The Sober Diaries, which came out two years ago and, um, and is still available. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and since then, you know, it was terrifying doing that, actually, because I, I was worried about being trolled. I was worried that, you know, people would uh, call me, you know, a, a bad mother and, uh, you know, lush and all these things, which, you know, actually, to be fair, I called myself, so, so it didn't really matter what anyone else called me. Um, uh, and actually, you know, the reaction has been fabulous. You know, I've, I've had um, messages from people all over the world saying how much that book helped. And, um, and that, you know, so once I'd finished, you know, writing that book and published it, I started, I wanted to carry on writing because it was my therapy and I love it. And um, yeah, uh, so I decided to start writing fiction. So that's where I am now. Yeah, oh, that's so lovely. Um, I first started your book and I think it was when it first came out and it was around about the time that I quit drinking. And I'd seen your blog first and I used to read your blog a lot when I was drinking. And I remember the, the opening title of the very first blog, it was something like, Mummy was a secret drinker until about four days ago. And I thought, and I think I've told you this before, wow, four days, that must be such an amazing feeling. And I desperately wanted to be four days alcohol free. Um, and then eventually I quit as well, as I say, two years ago. And your book was the first one that I read and it did, it helped me such a lot. And I had a message from one of the lovely members in the group as well. And she said that um, it helped her such a lot as well. Oh, good. So we're all so grateful for you for, you know, putting yourself out there and, and writing about your journey because it has helped so many people. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing how similar we are all are, you know, we might be different ages and different backgrounds and, and live in different countries and have, you know, be in different family situations and all of those things. But, you know, the experience of addiction and coming through addiction is remarkably similar. I've discovered, you know, from all the, all the letters that I've had. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, I find that I found that very reassuring and I wanted to sort of reassure other people in the same way. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
And you say that writing is your therapy. Have you always enjoyed writing? Is it something that you've always wanted to do? Uh, well, you know what? I mean, I used to love writing when I was much younger. Um, and then, you know, when I started work and I had kids, I just stopped writing. I hadn't written anything for decades apart from emails and texts and stuff. Mm. And it wasn't until I quit drinking that I started writing again. And I, I suddenly had this overwhelming urge to write about what I was going through, much like I'd written a teenage diary back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, and I haven't stopped since. And it's funny how many people I've come across who say that, you know, the thing that helped them when they quit drinking was the thing they loved doing when they were a child. And for some people that's writing, for some people it's art, for some people it's sport. Um, you know, there's a woman wrote to me saying that um, her thing when she was a child was um, riding um, horses and, mm. um, uh, and she hadn't done it for decades and quit drinking and took up riding again. And uh, now that's her big passion and her job and, you know, it's transformed her life. Um, so, yeah, so I, now I always say to people, you know, you, you will have a hole in your life when you quit drinking. And um, what you need to find something to fill that hole and, yeah. you know, to, to take your, to give your mind something else to focus on. And often, you know, think about what you loved when you were a child. Mm. That's, that's where often there's a clue yeah definitely I so agree with that and I talk about it quite a lot it's kind of like when you quit drinking you re rediscover who you really are don't you without mm. alcohol getting in the way and numbing everything out and blocking your your true self um, and it's only through removing the alcohol that we can get back to to who we are and I know it sounds a bit kind of woo and a bit hippie sometimes, but it's so true and it's, it's, it's not woo or hippie, it's just what happens naturally, I've found. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we don't realise when, when, when you've been drinking for a long time, um, you know, you don't realise how much you're numbing all your normal reactions and feelings and, and everything. And... You know, it's, um, and people say that, you know, you stop maturing at the point at which you become dependent on alcohol or, or any other drug. And, mm -hmm. you know, I certainly felt like that. I felt like, you know, when I quit drinking, I suddenly sort of grew up <laughs> quite quickly. Actually, yeah. funny enough, I started looking younger, but feeling older. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think that's true. Mm, yeah. Um, so tell us about the, your new book then. One of the members in the group said that the book's just arrived on her doorstep and she's really excited to read it. Um, I've read the first chapter, I think, um, and it looks so exciting. Oh, uh, well, well, this is it. Um, it's called The Authenticity Project. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's available on uh, Amazon and um, waterstones.com if you're in the UK. And uh, in you're, in, you're in the UK, it's also in Asda and Tesco, uh, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, so the story behind the, the book, book is um, it starts with a, an, a, an eccentric old artist called Julian. And he um, gets a little green notebook, a very ordinary notebook, and he writes on the front, the Authenticity Project. And inside he writes the truth about his life. And he tells a story about how lonely he is um, since his wife died and how isolated he feels. And then he says, if you pick up this book, then why don't you tell your own story and leave it for someone else to find? And he leaves the book deliberately in a cafe um, where it's picked up by the owner of the cafe, Monica. And the book is passed between six completely different people, all strangers, and um, they all tell a secret. They all tell a truth in the book, mm -hmm. um, in the Authenticity Project. And, um, and they all track each other down and change each other's lives in extraordinary ways. Oh. So, so it's, a, it's very much a feel-good book. It's about friendship, it's about community and connection. And I think all the things that we're really craving right now and, you know, what people 
have been telling me over and over again who've read it is is you know it it's in this at this time when we're all really anxious and nervous it's just a good way of of taking yourself away from all of that um and making yourself feel a little bit happier and if it does that for people then i'm thrilled <laughs> yeah oh it sounds lovely um yeah a bit of escapism is mm. just what we need right now and it is as as you would imagine one of the characters as i said there are six characters and one of them is an addict <laughs> Yeah. Um, and uh, he's called Hazard, and he's addicted to cocaine and alcohol. And at the beginning of the book, he quits both. Okay. And, and so we see his journey, um, not in as much detail as I told my own. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's he is very much based on my own experience, as as you will discover. Yeah, and did writing about him did that help you uh, even more to kind of come to terms with your own journey, with your, with yeah. your journey now? Um, yeah, you know, um, it's, you know, the whole, the book is, although it's fiction, it is, a lot of it is based on, on um, my own experience because, you know, the whole, when I, you know, when I started my blog, um, that my life, if you, from the outside, looked like it was pretty perfect. If you looked at my Facebook feed or my Instagram page, you know, it was all, you know, happy and mm -hmm. joyous, you know, and the reality is very, very different. And telling the truth about my dialogue is really what saved my life. And, and it, along the way, it helped other people. And that's really the theme behind the novel as well. It's all about how telling the real truth about your life and being, making yourself vulnerable mm -hmm. and being honest with other people about what you're really going through, not only helps you, but can help them too. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so, so it, it is absolutely, you know, based on my own experience. And I'm not even sure I really realized that until after I finished writing it. Oh really, that's interesting. <laughs> and did you think, do you think that it helped you even more writing about yourself, but from the point of view of somebody else? Yeah, um, because it allows you to explore different things in a sort of, um, uh, you know, in a, in a safe way, if you like. Um, so, you know, you can put your characters in situations and then get them out of situations that sort of allows you to, to realise, you know, what you might have felt or done yourself. So, and, yeah. it, and it helps, you know, writing about somebody going through, through, um, you know, uh, becoming sober, I think really helped me realize how far I'd come um, because, you know, it, it, I had to take myself back there and think, God, you know, that's, that's what it felt like. Yeah. So th there's a tricky bit where, this is a slight spoiler, but not too much, but has at one stage pulls off the wagon. And I found that really, really hard to write because wow. I was, I felt so close to him and you know I found myself apologizing to him as I was writing I was like, I'm really sorry I've got to do this to you because it's sort of necessary for the story but you know yeah. really and, and I felt awful <laughs> um, but uh, you know but he went through all the thought processes I've been through myself about you know, maybe now I can just have one and, you know, maybe I can be a normal drinker and after all, I wasn't that bad and all those things I thought myself, you know, he thinks at that point. Yeah, it's good to bring those things back into the light, isn't it, after a while because we do worry that we're not normal and we do want to be normal. Mm. And actually, what we, we keep forgetting is that, you know, being able to to take an addictive toxin on a regular basis or being unable to deal with that is perfectly normal. Our bodies are not are not designed yeah. to deal with that sort of stuff. So we are normal, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably more normal than people who who are still doing it and you know and and you know finding a way of coping with it. Mm. That's not normal at all. That's very unhealthy. That's very true. It is. It is. Um, what would you say that the biggest 
lesson that you've learned from um, your sobriety journey is? Uh, that's a tricky one, really, because there are so many. Um, I think uh, I, I think one of them, one of the important ones, is um, kindness, um, and on several different levels. I think I think being kind to yourself, yeah. um, and um, you know, I think we beat ourselves up so much about what we think we should be doing and feeling and you know, and that leads to all sorts of unhealthy behaviours. And, um, you know, I, I think being kind to yourself is is absolutely crucial. And I think, you know, having been through what I've been through, I now realise that everybody has something going on in their lives, you know. And I think I used to be very quick to judge people and very quick to, you know, to defence or get angry or, you know. And, and I don't more because, you know, if somebody is behaving in a way that I find strange, I don't like my immediate reaction is you know there is something going on in their life that I'm not aware of mm. um and you know and that and actually that that's a much um it's a much easier uh, and more relaxing way to live is you know being forgiving and and kind so yeah so I, I think that's that's one, one, one thing. I think another, another one of the major things that I've learned is, is bravery and courage. Yeah. Because um, when I was drinking, I, I, was, I, I think I spent a lot of time very anxious um, because whenever I got nervous about something, I'd have a drink and that stopped me dealing with the thing that I was nervous about. Um, mm. And stopped drinking and I had to cope with all of the things life throws at you completely. Um, raw um, mm. I realized that I could do it and I gained self-respect and I gained courage and I realized that you know you the only way you are definitely going to fail is not by it is by not trying so so yeah kindness courage self-respect yeah oh that's lovely because you've been through a lot apart from the quitting drinking you've had to face another big thing haven't you which required a huge amount of courage. Um, so how are you now in terms of yeah, your... So, so I had um, breast cancer a few yeah. months after I quit drinking. And, um, and I was, you know, I'm so glad. Uh, we talked at the beginning of this conversation about how glad we are not drinking stomach. It, it was a very, I had very similar feelings about not drinking through breast cancer treatment in mm. that I knew that if I were drinking, I would, I would have used it as an excuse to just take all the restrictions off. I would have drunk as much as I wanted all the time. And that would have made me much less able to cope. And, mm. you know, specifically, I would have cried in front of the children, probably, which I, I tried very hard not to do um and and i would just i would have been a mess yeah and it actually um you know uh when when the the proverbial uh, poo hits the fan um you know you want to be strong and sober and not um and uh, to answer your question how am i now um as far as i know i'm absolutely fine i've it's been four years uh, since my diagnosis and um, I was due a checkup a couple of weeks ago which um, is not going to happen for a while um, but uh, hopefully all fine touch wood. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so happy, oh, I'm so pleased for you Claire, that's wonderful. Um, so if anybody watching here is on the brink of deciding that they want to change their relationship with alcohol or maybe they are in the beginning stages of it what advice would you give to that person um oh i would say that um there's a great ted talk actually by a chap called johan harry and it's called everything you thought you knew about addiction is wrong mm. addiction is connection um, and I think that is so true I've got a message saying my internet connection is unstable can you still hear me 
Yeah, um, I can. Yeah, I got a little message as well, but it's fine. We just okay. get so. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, so the opposite of addiction is connection, and um, I think the most important thing when you're quitting drinking is to not do it alone. Yeah. And in the old days, the only real resource was um, Alcoholics Anonymous, which mm -hmm. is a fabulous resource if you want to use them. But if you don't want to use um, AA, there are so many other options out there now. Um, so things like your group, um, uh, there's also Club Soda, there's sort of uh, Soberistas, there's, um, there's so much help on the internet, there are other... Um, groups in real life, although obviously we're not doing anything in real life right now. Um, but I would say, you know, try and find your tribe because it is yeah. much easier to do this with help from other people. Um, yeah. uh, and the other thing I would say is, is write it down. You don't need to write a blog. You don't need to write something that any, anybody else needs to read. But it's just worth making a note of how you're feeling now so that later on you can you know when you start thinking oh I wasn't that bad and maybe I could just have one drink every now and again you can remind yourself what it felt like yeah. back then and also how far you've come so look I've got I've got the, a sort of halo here um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah so write it down find um find a tribe and um and just uh yeah know that you are not alone and you know and take it it's a cliche but it's a cliche for a reason take it one day at a time because mm -hmm. when you when you look too far ahead um it's scary and it's the same same with the pandemic you know if we all try and work out what's going to happen next how we're going to cope and all the things around the corner it becomes overwhelming you sort of just yeah. have to focus on the day you're in and if you make it to the end of the day without anything disastrous happening you've done a really good job <laughs> so yeah. yay <laughs> yeah. that's so true isn't it um and i second that just be proud of yourself for mm. getting through whatever it is you get through if it's 10 minutes and that's amazing if it's yeah the whole day in evening that's just wonderful um, because it can be really hard work at times. Um, yeah, and, and I think we, you know, in a, this day and age, we're used to things happening really fast. And I think when I first quit drinking, I thought that within three weeks, I would feel normal. Yeah. And it doesn't take three weeks. It takes about a year, actually. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, and I, so I would say just... You know, don't expect it all to happen really fast. It will, it, ha it, it will happen, but it happens very gradually, and it also goes up and down a bit. So, you know, so sometimes you think, oh God, I thought it was getting better, and it's suddenly getting worse again. It will, you know, that's it's temporary. You'll get there. It's it's just a bit of a roller coaster. And um, actually, there's a blog post on Mahmoud's Sprinker. It's also in in my my book, The Sober Diaries, um, called The Obstacle Course. And and in that, I talk about how long it takes and how um you know what you expect you can expect to go through and and uh you know and persevering till you get there and and i think that that blog post people say is quite helpful yeah i've read that many times <laughs> um i'll get the link and i'll put it in the comments underneath the video so people can oh, thank you. It. but it is a brilliant article a brilliant blog and and yeah I suppose if you expect that it's not all going to be, you know, pink fluffy clouds all the time, then it does make it easier to to deal with, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, if it, I think the, the the reason it's helpful to know what's coming up is, you know, when I thought that three weeks is all it was going to take, you get to the end of three weeks and you think, well, I feel really bad. I feel worse than I did when I started this, so what's the point? Mm -hmm. And I think knowing that it's a longer journey than that and knowing that it's sort of going to be a bit up and down and knowing what to expect and what it will feel like at the end is really helpful because it just gives you a bit of a roadmap because otherwise you feel like you're setting out on this really hard journey and you have no idea what you're going to face. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Okay. I mean, that, that's part of the reason I guess I wanted to, to publish the Sober Diaries because I kept reading all these memoirs um, 
about people quitting drinking and um, uh, you know at the, at the time um, all everything that was available was about basically about the drinking years so I would read these stories about about people drinking so I read A. A. Gill and I read uh, Blackout Sarah Heppler which is brilliant I read um, uh, Caroline Knapp's um, uh, Drinking a Love Story, which is fabulous. All really good memoirs, but they were all about the drinking years. And I would read them and think, God, yes, I, I associate with that. I, that is me. I, I know exactly how that feels. And at the end, it would say, and then I quit drinking and now my life is much better. And, and I, I felt like that should be the beginning. <laughs> you know, I wanted to know what happened next and how they quit drinking and how long it took and what it felt like. And you know, and I felt that at the time there wasn't anything out there that did that, that said, you know, what happened after you stopped drinking? Yeah. So that's, that's why my, my book started with the day I quit drinking. Um, and there were some flashbacks to what life was like before, but mm -hmm. effectively it's a story about what happens after you quit and not what happens before you quit, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I really liked about it. Um, I have to say that I think I devoured the whole book in about two days when I first got it. Um, and then as I went along my journey, I would get to day, I don't know, 75, and I'd be like, oh gosh, I'm feeling a bit anxious or I don't know what to do. And I would go and say, right, what did Claire do on day 75? Or how is she doing now on day, I don't know, 93? I'd be like, oh, okay, that's what she did. Mm, that's a good idea, I'll try that. And that really helped. Um, to kind of follow somebody going through the same thing as you at the same time even though you weren't but you were in a sense because I could open the book and look at where you were on my day yeah, and, and a, a lot of people have, have done exactly that and they say that um the the time frame is remarkably consistent actually the sort of you know people generally say that the first three weeks are the hardest in terms of physical symptoms so you know headaches or lack of concentration or yeah. not being able to sleep properly those sorts of things um and the but 100 days is about the time when you start seeing light at the end of the tunnel and you think actually you know i am starting to feel completely different and much yeah. better um, and that's about 100 days and then about six months is when it starts becoming the new normal yeah um so, and, you know, and those time frames, um, you know, do, do seem to be relatively consistent from one person to the next. Did you find that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Pretty quickly, though, I felt that it was what I wanted to do. I won't say forever, but that's kind of what I feel. Because it was, for me, just a revelation of waking up in the morning and not feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And I just thought, I'd never want to feel like that again. So pretty quickly, I thought, okay, this has got to be the way to go. But still, it was a journey and it was a struggle at times. And um, it, yeah, I would say it took me about six months to kind of settle into it and start to feel all of the benefits that people talk about. Um, and then after a year, it was kind of fixed in my head that, yeah, this is it, definitely. Mm. Call that. Yeah. Mm. And actually, you know, I don't know about you, but I found that the second year is, is the one where the, you know, often the miracles start to happen because the first year you're very much focused inwardly. It's sort of like, how am I feeling about this physically? How am I feeling emotionally? Um, as you say, you get to sort of, you know, tear yourself apart and put yourself back together again yeah, and yeah. you know it's hard work but it's all inward focused and you know when you get to year two you then often start thinking okay now what am I going to do with my life you know now I've got lots more time I've got lots more energy I've mm -hmm. got more courage I've got you know I understand myself better what am I going to do with all of that yeah. and and often you know year two is when people's lives really start yeah I can relate to that mm. Mm. yeah yeah um and it's funny isn't it how you start off as you say very inward and worrying and stressing out and going through all the changes 
but then when you come out the other side you're like wow this is amazing um and you you don't expect to feel that way because you can't really see it at the start that's what i mm -hmm. found that it just seemed such a long way off but last week i think it was i celebrated two years sober and part of me just can't quite believe how i got here in terms mm -hmm. of the time between year one and year two it's just blown by um, oh, it, goes, it goes even faster <laughs> I, I, I got to my five year sober anniversary um uh which was uh, last month and um i forgot it um, it wasn't until about three days after that so, oh my god i just missed it <laughs> And, you know, and that is extraordinary given that in the early days, you know, I would be counting the hours, yeah. you know, then I counted days for the first few months and then eventually started counting months. Um, but the idea that I could forget a whole sort of, you know, major milestone like that, you know, I never would have believed it. <laughs> I know, I know. And I think that's helpful for people to know who are maybe at the beginning and they're worrying that they might be counting the days forever. Gradually, mm. you forget about which day you're on, don't you? Yeah, and you know, and I found when people told me at the beginning, um, take it one day at a time, I found that idea quite depressing in a way because I thought, God, am I never, am I going to spend the rest of my life just taking it one day at a time? You know, and and the answer is no. You take it one day at a time for as long as you need to, and then, yeah, you, know, as you say you forget about it, and you know, I never. I never think about alcohol anymore. That's the most miraculous thing is, you know, I spend, it used to be on my mind all the time, all the time. Mm. And I never think about it now. I don't notice if other people are drinking. I'm not, I don't care if other people are drinking. I, I don't, you know, I mean, there are a, a few occasions, once in a blue moon when I might think, oh, that would be the sort of time it'd be nice to have a drink. And normally it's when something really brilliant happens. And I think, how am I going to celebrate? And I and a, a piece of cake doesn't quite cut it, um, <laughs> but it's a missing feeling, and I know it's not worth it. So you know, yeah. I would never act on it. Yeah, yeah. So how do you celebrate now when something amazing happens, um, like you know, the launch of your book? Well, I I find that you know I you have to you have to plan ahead a bit more. I mean, the thing about opening a bottle of wine or pouring a vodka or whatever is it's very quick and easy and I think that's why we become so reliant on it because you know it's so it's so simple something good happens it's like oh pour a glass something bad happens oh pour a glass you know I mean it's, it's very immediate and um, I think when you quit drinking you have to think a little bit harder about how to celebrate those milestones so you know I would do things like I'll book myself a massage or mm -hmm. I'll go and um, have a pedicure or I'll go and see a friend for tea or you know I'll uh, I'll arrange a, a meal out with a family you know I mean so you, you just have to think a little bit harder about it and you have to make sure that you still do celebrate all those things because you know it's it's really important um, and uh, and you find that actually your life becomes much more varied and richer because you know I used to if I was planning an evening out it was easy I would just go to a bar or go to a restaurant that was it mm. and you know now my life is so much more varied than that so you know I, I started going to the, uh, this is all stuff of course we can't do right now <laughs> but I started doing things like going to the theatre a lot more going to art galleries you know going for walks with friends you know I mean it I, I think, yeah, life became much, much more varied than it had been for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because when we're drinking, our world is quite small, isn't it? Because that is the only focus. How much can we drink and kind of, that's all we think about. But you're so right that the world just opens up when the alcohol goes. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, when you're drinking, it expands the take up you know it sucks up everything else mm. in your life it doesn't leave room for anything else and you don't realize that's what it's doing until until it's too late really and it's only after you quit that you realize you realize you know how you bad you'd let it get mm. yeah yeah oh, well just before we go um what is the best thing for you about not drinking anymore 
Um, I think the the best thing is the headspace. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, just not having that little voice constantly going, you know, are you going to drink tonight? How much are you going to drink tonight? Where are you going to buy it from? What are you going to know? Um, maybe you shouldn't drink tonight. I mean, all it, it was. I think I think every, you know if any, anyone who's had any form of addiction knows about that voice, and, and it's not there anymore. You know, I don't have a little narrative in my head, um, mm -hmm. which you know is so liberating. Um, and I'm not sure if that makes sense to anyone who hasn't been in that position, but I think anyone who has would understand what I mean. And that's that's the thing I'm still grateful for is is just be, feeling free. Yeah. What about you? Definitely that for me, yeah, because it's exhausting, isn't it? Constantly talking to yourself and listening to yourself and trying to justify your decisions and, and argue with yourself. And it's just on and on and on. And when it stops, it's like, like you said, it's just so liberating and you feel free and calm. Mm. I never thought that I could be so calm yeah it's amazing the difference yeah i agree and that impacts everything it impacts your family life your work life your friendships you know everything mm, yeah oh well thank you so much claire i don't want to take <laughs> too much of your time and listen, um, take care. I hope everyone, you and and you know anyone, everyone in your group gets through this yes. time. And um, you know, in in a way, it's the hardest time not to drink because obviously we're all under so much stress. But in a way, it's so much easier because you know when I first quit, the hardest thing was other people. It yeah. was the you know going to all those parties and all those events and sort of you know and actually. We're not doing any of that right now. <laughs> so, exactly. so, you know, if you are in those early days, you know, there are good, very good things about quitting now. Um, yeah. You know, as, as well as tricky things. Yeah. And there's lots of support if people hmm. need it online as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And we've all, you know, all of us have moved more online right now, haven't we? Yeah. So, yeah. We have. Oh, well, thank you so much. Good to talk to you again. You so too. Much. Take care. Um, bye. bye, Claire. Bye. bye.